Okay, I'm just going to get right into this. I I just finished, and chapter 14 blew my freaking mind. Okay, I don't want to read a whole bunch of it, and I keep saying that, and you just never know how it's going to go. But let's just get to some of the big details, the big reveals. Uh, it starts with this epigraph that it's like this army ready to go to war. We have dead warriors, or I guess you'd call them undead. I, I don't know. Um... We have the the dead horses underneath. Brucalian of the Grey Swords marches next to the bridge burners who go to war against his Grey Swords go to war. Uh, holy moly. Uh, and Iskar Jarek, bird that steals, sits astride a black horse and looks to command once more. And, and we know... We know that uh, that means um, Whiskey Jack. And, and, you know, the realm of the dead is very, very odd. Holy. Okay. So we have, uh, yes, it starts right away with Master Quell going to Gruntle and being like, I, I need you to help me out with something. I need to go into Hood's realm and uh, I need you to be my escort. Gruntle's like, <laughs> are you are you sure? You want me to do that? What about if we get Mapo and da 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 da? And uh, he's like, no, let's just go with you. Uh, there's this guy named the cartographer who thinks that's his name, but he he must be good with with maps. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know much about him other than the very last scene. He ties himself to the wheel as this big wave is coming. Anyway, um, <laughs> hilarious. Okay, so Hood commands. Uh, he never commanded before, but he ha he has all this realm of the dead at his disposal, ready to command. And this is what, yeah, this is what this this cartographer says. Now it's very interesting that these guys are just blazing their way through these different warrens and. Uh, I love that moment in Memories of Ice when they're walking and Silver Fox is in the back and then the, the Trigal Trade Guild kind of bursts through and there's like arms and stuff holding on. So wherever they go, you know, they are awesome, but they're a little bit messy with things. They don't really cover their tracks super well, but uh, they can do things that other people really can't, can't do. So that's why I had them carry me into uh, seven cities to do that you know they took me through hood's realm too uh to do my apology to felison okay so talk is there oh 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 wait hold on he gives a command hood gives a command the first command is is come so that you know uh it's more like he says that, and they just do it. Uh, and But his next command, just to him, is go. And this, this cartographer is making these flotation devices uh, out of coconuts for if people fall out of the, the carriage. Because they, they might need these. Um, and now they, they're going in. They're going in. And a lone rider approaches... Uh, it's a Sagula, and he's kind of eyeing up Gruntle. I think Gruntle would like to try things out with him. He kind of mentions how the the greatest, the the biggest enemy is uh, uh, the biggest enemy for a commander is fear. The true enemy reminds me of, uh, you know, I don't know all the specifics, but like the. You know the the Celts, the 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 people in the German regions who would come charging and screaming, and if you could just stand your ground a little bit and and hold that wall, you might be okay. But uh, fear, fear, man, uh, major major enemy in uh, in a battle. But this army, this dead army, knows no fear. As with the Talani Mass, says Gruntle. Okay, what need has Hood ha what what need has Hood for an army? 
Will he now wage war against the living? If only. You don't belong here. It's like, stop. Don't come here. Don't come here anymore. I don't know if it means, like, don't come here so you don't blast things uh, into our realm or, or what, or if it's dangerous to have things blasted out, but talk is there. Whiskey Jack shows up. Brocalian, who he was the guy I liked. Uh, before Ekovian did his whole stuff, but we often forget, I think, Brucalian in Kapistan. Man, he he was awesome. He went out awesome. And so, yeah, he, I shall deliver your message, and the, the message is stay away. Uh, and, yep, message is loud and clear. The borders are sealed to the living. There will be sentinels, patrols, Intrusions were not, will not be tolerated. Where we march, you can't go. Not now, perhaps never. Stay away until the choice is taken from you. Stay away. Which is, you know, it, you know, this is this is the world of the dead. Which, you know, people you'd think people just go there, but uh, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. How I, I can't wait to see where this goes. And they're on their way out, and this undead dragon, like, dives for the, dives for the, the, the rift, or, or whatever you would call it. Makes his way through, flies off, and, uh, <laughs> I think Master Quell, Gruntle says that Master Quell said, oops. <laughs> so it's like the best. I love I love this group, this Trigal Trade Guild group. They are they are crazy, they are insane, right? Uh, we have Carso looking out to the east with this tension, and saying there's something happening. Uh, in retrospect, is he seeing this? Is he seeing this forest or no? This wave or storm or whatever. Anyway, let's skip. Let's skip through. She says we need to find water. I, I think water's on its way, maybe. Um, and, and I'm just thinking, like, Carsa just is this inverse version of of Burden within Dragnapur. He's, but he's like the driving force of it. But everyone else else is chained to it. He he'll drag them forward. He'll get where he needs to go. <laughs> just hold on to him. Uh, okay, we have an escort, great waver, great ra ravens, hounds of shadow, and he's going to go out and meet these hounds of shadow, and he's going to have this meeting with Cotillion and Shadow Throne. We have this big, long kind of, uh, you know, just skin tick is internalizing. He still is... Very upset and resentful about Anamander Rake, and uh, also thinks Namander has changed quite a bit and distrusts Clip. Uh, yeah, he 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 sees that he's going and dealing all this death, and Clip doesn't seem to mad uh, to to care. They think about what they're going to do when they get to Anamander Rake, and they said they feel like they are drowning in blood and that Anamander Rake wouldn't even throw a rope to save them. How wrong they are about that, in my opinion. Anyway, then we have this scene with Anamander Rake, and he calls Endis Salan. And he says, It is not often that I feel the need to ease the burden of Dragdepert. Take it off. He puts it on this stone, and even the stone starts to sweat, which just makes you realize how how he's even more solid than a stone. You like metaphorically. I, I love I love Anamandarake. He's not gonna last. He's not gonna last. Dang it. He sent Spinnaker 
uh, Duravaway. Yes, I heard. You have no choice. And he says this. It is not history that so assailed us, although many see it that way. The lessons of futility can be gathered by anyone with a mind so inclined. Every triumph hollow, every glory revealed at last at, to be ephemeral. But none of that gives cause to wither the spirit. Damage it, perhaps, yes. But the road we have walked down stands high above such things. We were murdered by compromises. The day we accepted her turning away, Endist, was the day we ran knives across our own throats. You know, they are, they are... He, I, I, I don't know. You know, that could be taken a couple ways. Like, no, you are not going to forsake us or... Go ahead and forsake us, but we are going to make something of ourselves, regardless uh, of of you doing this or not. We are an ancient, stubborn people. See how long it has taken to bleed out? Without the dragons, we would all be dust. And I love this, what Andis thinks about, you know, he's looking at Anamanda Rake. Chaos is in you, yes. A fire on the promontory. Uh, a, a beacon piercing the profound entropy we saw all around us. And yet, so few of you have proved worthy of our allegiance. So few, Lord. And fewer with each generation until now here you stand virtually alone. He's just this awesome leader. We've had some great ones in this series, haven't we? Tears were now streaming from his eyes. You will find strength within you, Endis Silan. Of that, I have no doubt. I, I, I still don't understand what he's going to have to do, but it sounds like he's going to have to kill him, or you know, kill him to take the sword. Like it's like he he's he's foreshadowing and prophesying his own death. Uh, yes, sire. As shall I. And with that, the Son of Darkness reached out, reclaimed the sword, dragged up her. You know, he's going to have the strength to do what he has to, too. Rake's legs did not buckle, did not even so much as tremble. He stood tall, unbowed, and in the smile he offered Endis Salan, there was a certainty of purpose, so silent, so indomitable, so utterly appalling that Endist, Endist felt his heart clench. And his, and his lord stepped close then, and with one hand brushed the wetness from his cheek. That is like so sweet. That is so sweet. That, that's almost making me well up. Okay. So we have Salan, Saland dancing, and she could go attack again, but it, it you know, and we have... Seer Domin and and the Redeemer Ikovian and the Redeemer is saying well she doesn't because some things leak through which makes me think you know even if this Kellic has her has her really beyond her own kind of capacity to hold back um, it's making this massive certainty in her that she, that, uh, you know, it, we get back to that certainty thing from the last book. Uh, but there are things that leak through, maybe little bits of her her humanity or something. And and I, I, I highlighted a whole bunch, but the, the gist of the next part is that, that the Talani Mass would come to help the Redeemer and defend. And really, he has so much... That he is holding that needs to be defended, but he will not ask for it. And, and you just think, man, come on, some of these people should ask. Some of these people should ask. <sighs> okay, so this next part's interesting. It's from her point of view. The soul lunged, the soul crawled, the soul scraped and dragged and pitched headlong and in the place it desired, needed, there was the bliss of certainty. I just think tribalism and uh, all the stuff from the last book. 
conviction like armor, ever shining like swords, like justification because you're certain that you're on the right side. She danced the truth like truth unleashed. The beauty of simplicity flowed pure and sweet through her limbs, rode the ebb and sweep of her sighing breath. All those agonizing uncertainties were gone. Every doubt obliterated by the gift of Simon Kellick. Well, whatever, however you say it, Kellick. The bliss of certainty delivered another gift. She saw before her a universe transformed, one where contradictions would be rightfully ignored, where hypo hypocrisy did not exist, where to serve the truth in oneself permitted easy denial of anything that did not fit. This is, like, amazing. Um, Saland understood now that the Redeemer was a child god, innocent, yes, but not in a good way. The Redeemer possessed no certainty in himself. He was not all-seeing but blind. Kallik brought an end to ambiguity. It divided the world cleanly, absolutely. She must give that to him. It would be her gift the greatest gift imaginable to her beloved God. And like, that's the worst thing imaginable. I kind of want that to happen, but I don't want that to happen. But I kind of want to see what would happen. Such joy. She had a gift. It was her duty to deliver it, whether you like it or not. Holy smokes. Uh, Kars is walking up. He gets kind of surrounded by the hound, but they're not doing anything. Uh, Shadow Throne, he, he goes to Shadow Throne and Cotillion, and Shadow Throne see, says, you know, notice how this guy can walk, he can walk through sorcery. I wonder if all mortals will be like him one day. Uh, Karsa warns them of the, the number counters. Uh, Cotillion says that there is a temple in Darugistan that awaits him. He's like, I don't, I don't care about that. I, I, I told the crippled God I wasn't interested. I'm still not. My destiny belongs to me and none other. It's like, you know, he, uh, the crown sounds so tempting, but if you take the crown, you're still beholden to the one who placed it, which was the problem with Rulad. We're not encouraging you to take it. Far from it. You on that throne would be distressing, to say the least. But we will drive you... Toblakai, the way hunters drive a man-eating lion straight into a spike-filled pit. And he says, a wise lion. Karsa says that a wise lion knows when to turn. Watch as the hunters scatter. And they have sort of this same ideal in some way where they have both left civilization. They both have this kind of disdain in a way, it seems. Which is confusing, but... I mean, it, it, there are cool points in this and why they are seeing this stuff. Uh, and and that's when Cotillion grimaced. He says, I stand corrected, Shadow Throne. If the cripple god has not yet learned this lesson with this warrior, more lessons are bound to follow. Oh, anyway, they're talking about the clerks and stuff, but we won't get into that. Toblakai, this is Shadow Throne, heed this warning. If you value your destiny, you would seek for yourself. Do not stand in traveler's path ever. The destiny you seek for yourself. You know, I, I read that wrong. Heed this warning. If you value that destiny, you would seek for yourself. Do not stand in traveler's way ever. Carson's grin broadened. We are agreed, he and I. You are. I will, stand. I will not stand in his path. He will not stand in mine. He said, I've killed two Dergoth, you know. We do know. Their arrogance was their soft underbelly, easy to reach. I killed them because they were weak. They thought me weak. Hmm. You laugh at those coming to the crippled god. Perhaps one day I will laugh at those coming to you, to the to them too. Oh, okay. Shadow Throne and Cotillion, they sense the the spirits within the sword proud it's like it, proud of their leader i guess proud that uh, of of how he is leading them all those poor clerks once carsa gets their hand, his hands on them right oh man 
Clerks of Civilization. Okay, so I think we are at the, yeah, the very last scene. Is that a cloud on the horizon? And we don't know if it's a storm or a cloud. And Mappo and Grunter are like, these guys are crazy. And, you know, Gruntle wouldn't say that too lightly. And I don't think Mappo would, you know, Mappo was hanging out with Ikarian. But these guys are riding this wave or riding this storm. And, and uh, you know, they're crazy. They Master Quell let out this undead dragon into this world. Um it's just crazy. It's just crazy, these guys. And I love them. Inside you go. Uh, and that's our ride. You know, he's asking, are we going into a war? And he's like, that's where we're going. We are leaving Hood's realm. We're going into Male's realm. Climb aboard, you oaf, or you'll drown. Uh, the very last part here, he lunged for the carriage. As he scrambled up the side and fumbled for the lashing, Rakanto Ilk squinting said, Is it here yet? And the horses began screaming in earnest. These these very, very uh, rad horses. And all at once, the short-sighted idiot had his answer. Amazing. Amazing. I love it. So, uh, might get to chapter 15. At least part of it. That was awesome. Uh it's just getting better and better at least things are kind of starting to pick up i could totally see why people would find the first parts to be a slog i still loved them but now i'm ready for for some action especially if we have this undead army kind of forming up so really excited to see where that goes i'll talk to you soon